Like it'll stay nothing. Yeah. How many times you'll keep going around the same mountain over and over and over? And God keeps showing you this has become a stumbling block. Amen. Gotta be a secret disciple. A Nicodemus by a Nicodemus by night. You go faster. You can only come out at night time. Mm. Mm. What, 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 is, what is that? What is that? You can't walk through the mall with your man. Jesus. Even if you're dead, why you got to be the chick on the side? If you're gonna be the chick on the side, something's wrong. That's right. Well, we going through something. <laughs> We work, he working on his divorcement. You, are, you don't want better for yourself? God speaking to me through the night. I know what I'm talking about. I ain't asking, I'm telling you. I know that. But you gotta go and seek the rendezvous there. Go away here. Go away there. It's leading you away from where God wants you, and you're about to die. And God said, I'm arresting you. Because you're getting ready to fall into a trap. And this one you won't make it out. Because you're imitating. Because you have to learn how to sit still and wait on God. I know I'm talking right. I don't need an amen. Because I know what the Lord told me. God said, I want to get to the place where I can trust you. I can't trust you right now. Because your emotions are everywhere. Everything that glitter, I told you, ain't gold. Amen. Somebody just slip their hands and worship God for us. <clears throat> no more imitation. You're too better, too much for that. You're, you're better than that. You're better than that. You don't need to be a chick on the side. You don't need to be a dude on the side. You, you, don't need, you, you need to be the main thing. God's got better for you. I'm telling you what I know. I ain't telling you nothing I ain't been through. God's got better. Don't sell yourself short. Things ain't working out in your house. God can fix that. If we get right with God, he'll fix it. He'll fix it. I'm telling you, he'll fix it. He'll fix it. He'll heal it. He'll heal broken relationships. He'll manage it. He'll put things together. He'll give you wisdom. He'll give you understanding. He'll help you raise them kids. But he's not going to give you. The kids can't get stable because you ain't stable. The imitators of God. God removed the ill children of Israel out of his presence. The worst thing in the world, believers. You can put your hands down. The worst thing in the world is for God to ask you to leave. When God removes you out of his presence, it's terrible. When David went through all that he went through, he slept with Bathsheba, he numbered God's people, he did all the stuff that he did. God said, got you. You know what he prayed? He said, Lord, whatever you do, don't take your spirit from me. To be left without God is hell. Amen. Amen. I can deal without having people around me. Uh, yes. It don't matter if you don't come by and say hello. I, I'm all right with that. Right. I was in my mother's room and I had nobody. <laughs> Thank you. Many days I had to make up games and play by myself. I don't have no problem with that. But not to have the spirit of God. Yes. To be able to call on him and hear him answer me. To feel his presence. I don't want to feel his presence. If I, if I, even times when I've gotten a little far from him and I thought he wasn't around. Was a feeling of despair. Yes. Jesus. To be laid in the hospital, not knowing what's getting ready to happen to you, and be called on God and don't feel him like I used to feel him. Mm -hmm. One scripture says that they, they got so tied up. And, and this is why you have to be careful, because Ephesians talks about it too, because it says that the days are evil. Mm -hmm. And so if you're out there and you're meandering, and the scripture that I read before, what I gave you, what, I, what the Ephesians, and it says that sexual immorality should, should not be, what, is that not even a hint of it? Yeah. What's a hint? You know, it's a hint, give me just a, just a hint of hot sauce, just a hint. Yeah. It's just, you, you can taste a little bit, just a hint. Ain't a whole lot. Just a hint. He said it should not what? It should not even be amongst us. We don't like to talk about that. But, but you'd be surprised.
describe how he has infiltrated, infiltrated the body of Christ. Yeah. Do you have that scripture yet? But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity. Any kind, any kind. It doesn't matter what it is. Come on. Thank you. Porn. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. Amen. Sexual immorality. Sexing. Sexing, texting, texting, sexing. Yes. Come on. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Because you know I'm talking right. I'm not suggesting that you know, that it doesn't happen. I'm not blind. But he said it shouldn't be a hint of it. And so what you have to do is when that stuff is in your life, you got to walk with God and say, God, help me to come out of that. It's addictive. Married folk do it. Single folk do it. Come on, somebody. Amen. You, you, you have because it's, it's, it will stop you. It will block you. Yes. And it may be fine for a while. Ain't nothing happen. Nothing happen. But then when you get ready to talk to God about something and you need some clarity, you can't really get it. Yes. 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 Amen. And then the enemy will make you feel guilty about it, and your guilt will keep you from approaching God, who He said, whether you're guilty or not, you can still come. But because you're in it, then the guilt hits you. Say, I can't go to church. I can't see God's face. And it's a lie. Because you can come to God guilty. But the devil gets you trapped in it. So you feel the guilt and the shame. And you won't come. Look at somebody say, bring your guilty self anyway. Bring your guilty self anyway. Everybody got something. This is not a message to condemn you. It's to bring awareness. Because where the blessings are right now, you don't want nothing to stop you. I got too many things on the table that I need God to do for me that I can't allow things to stop me. I need God to be God over my life everywhere. You want to get to the place where you say, God, get in my checkbook. God, get in my sexual orientation. God, get in my pants if you need to. God, y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. You need to ask God, get in my life. And, and into the fire. Oh, God. They made their children pass through the fire. What does that mean? Literally they did. What's the application? Is that when you deal with certain things, you bring and force your kids to follow because they imitate you. Amen. Amen. You don't think they know you sneaking? You don't think they know you get high? You don't think they hear you on the cell phone talking to somebody else other than their papa? <laughs> oh, Jesus. They ain't dumb. They just log it in their computer. That's right. And when you go to tell them something, they say, okay, mom. <laughs> we must imitate him. Amen. We've got to tear down our idols. Yes. Now, what what you can take time and go home and read the story, talk about how the idols uh were in the in the in the in the room with the Ark of the Covenant. And when they were in the Ark of the Covenant, in the room with the Ark of the Covenant, that they closed the door. And one time they opened the door and, and the idol was on his face. Then they came in, hands were broken off. Next time, head was broken off. Next time, totally destroyed. And God says, if you don't remove your idols, he said, I will. And when God removes something, he doesn't do it nice. What's your mama do when she tell you to take something out, put that down, and you don't put it down? She snatches it out of your hand. You don't want God to snatch, start snatching stuff. Yes. When things become idle, he'll say, he said, I, I told you. I'll, I'll, I'll start snatching. Don't make me come in that room and snatch it. He'll start snatching people out of your life. Yes. One way or the other. And something that, remember I tell you about the fire? The thing that you, you, you know you use, it'll come back on you. If you make somebody an idol, I know you date and you love and it's great and all that, don't make them no idol. You know that God promised you some stuff. It's not that he doesn't want you to have it. 
He doesn't want you to get it and then wreck it. It's like you got a kid, you got a car coming, you know you got a car, but he's not mature enough yet for the car. Because he ain't gonna put a seatbelt on. And he said, you know what? I have to wait till you get a little more mature, then I'll give you the key. You know, I see God's got the blessing for you, but we're not mature enough. My mother mature. We're not mature enough yet to handle it because he doesn't want to bless you. Then you get out there, then you wreck it, and everybody says, see, what kind of God you got? Then you your parents teach you that when you go somewhere and say, listen, you go out here, do what I tell you to do. You got my name on you. God says the same thing. It's not that you won't go through things. It's not that you won't make mistakes. We're not talking about that. But what you practice becomes perfect. Practice being a believer. Practice loving God. Practice getting things right. That's why God said David. That's what you said confused me. How in the world Lord David did all that mess? And you talk about he's a man after your heart. After that? I said, God, I ain't do that. And you say he's a man after your own heart. You know why? Because David said this, my sins are ever before me. He would come to God, Lord, look. Did it again. He wouldn't hide it. He would say, Lord, this is what's going on. I'm struggling with it. I need you to help me with this. This is, if, if they call one more time. Be honest with God. Be honest with yourself. 